for the past five years, I, I go every summer to uh, a Jesuit-run parish in East Los Angeles. It happens to be the poorest parish in the Archdiocese of Los Angeles. And there are a group of Jesuits there. Michael Kennedy is the pastor, and Greg Boyle I is on the staff there. Greg works mostly with the, the gang members. Uh, both of them are quite well known. Uh, Michael's published now his third book with Crossroads. And every summer I'll go and I'll spend three weeks or four weeks in the community doing pastoral work, but then also interviewing people. And I've developed a database of interviews with especially women uh, who are members of Christian life communities, uh, women who ha have suffered this incredible deracination and, and trans, you know, sort of a, a movement into a completely different context, social, religious, political, economic context. They've gone from third world to first world, from a Spanish-speaking environment to an English-speaking environment, from a mostly Catholic culture to a, a mostly Protestant culture. They've gone from being in a position, an economic position, which was typical for their society, to being in an economic position, which is at the very bottom of a, of a huge social pyramid. And they've gone from uh, oftentimes a patriarchal culture to a matriarchal one uh, within the, the housing projects. And I'm really interested in seeing how their faith uh, has allowed them to make this transition, and how their faith has allowed them to construct a new community. Uh, and so, for example, they have these Christian life communities. There are 11 of them in the parish. And these are, are, are women who are quite poor. And oftentimes they work uh, cleaning houses or cleaning offices. or They have quite menial tasks. And yet these are women who are willing to get up at 3 in the morning and cook food for the janitors who are on strike. These are women who will go on their one day off of the week. They will go to juvenile hall and do prayer groups with uh, the incarcerated youth in the, in the youth authority. Uh, these are women who will simply notice that the man across the street uh, has cancer, and they will organize themselves, and they will take care of him because he has no family. Uh, so there's something about their faith that motivates them to really heroic actions and to a type of social solidarity. And since some of them don't have documentation, uh, one would think that they would do everything they could to hide themselves and to go unnoticed, and yet they will participate in the kind of public protest uh, that their faith demands when they wish to work for justice, not only for themselves, but for, for others. Uh, so I interviewed them about their faith. I interviewed them about their religious practices. They they meditate, they do an, a sort of an Ignatian contemplation. I was surprised to find that uh, the Virgin of Guadalupe, while a very respected image of holiness, is not the center of their faith. Uh, they are very Christocentric in their faith. Uh, they have a very sophisticated uh, and quite orthodox theology. Uh, they have a very developed prayer life and they have an ability to deal with suffering <laughs> on a quite profound level. So I continue to be a sort of a participant observer uh, in this community, and uh, I've written a few more popular pieces on it, and I wish to continue to study them until I get to the point where I think I understand them enough to dare to say something about them in a more scholarly context.